In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My sisters and my brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all, the faith, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessings, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, May the words of this gospel be in our minds, on our lips, and forever in our hearts. When Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. If anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them, then he will send them at once. This happened so to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, say to daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them, they brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. Today is Palm Sunday, the day the people came out in numbers and threw palms on the ground and exalted Jesus, the King of Kings. But as only a few days later, those same people who exalted Jesus cried out, crucify him, crucify him. You and I, as God's holy people, our hearts are finicky and, and, and crazy and sometimes fickle. We need to know God's love. We need to be open to his mercy. Today we do sing out Hosanna to the King, but in moments from now we will be yelling out, crucify him, crucify him because we are always together walking on one foot towards holiness and the other towards sin. We are in need of Jesus who came to save us. We are in need of Jesus who filled us. So my sisters and brothers, let us go forth in the name of Christ so that we can experience right now the glory and the power of our Savior and our King Jesus as we sing Hosanna.
My sisters and brothers, let us pause and call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we're going to set up now for the reading of God's Word and for the Passion. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why, why have, have you abandoned, abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my, my God, God, why have, have you abandoned, abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard, regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him the teacher says my appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. He, sa 
He said in reply, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that person by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better if that person had never been born. Then Judas, his, re- his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Though all might have their faith shaken in you, oh, excuse me, amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. 
Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Take, look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered, Friend, do what you have come here for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father and he will provide me at this moment more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scripture be fulfilled which say it must come to pass this way? At this hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. 
A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a car crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the car crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said. You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one of you, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Let him when Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. 
they spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry the cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine drink to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him, for he said, The revolutionaries who were, who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lima sabatani. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men who were with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he 
Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was in New Orleans, On the Saturday before Palm Sunday, I would drive all around the city and I had a big machete with me. And I'd drive up to these big old palm trees in public areas and I'd pull the little truck that the the Son of Jesus Lord owned, I'd pull it over and I would look around and no one was looking and I'd jump out of the truck and I'd grab the machete in the back of the truck and I would just hit a palm tree branch and a palm tree branch would fall to the ground and I'd pick it up and I'd put it in the truck and I'd drive to the next palm tree. I would put hundreds and hundreds of palms into my, into my truck and I'd go back to the center of Jesus the Lord and I'd wash each of the palms very carefully and once they were washed I would then take them and I'd rip them apart and I'd put them all together in baskets and I would keep them refrigerated overnight. On the next day, people would come to the center of Jesus Lord and we'd meet around the corner and I'd be in the courtyard of this beautiful retreat house I had, I was running, and I would bless the palms and we would take the palms and we'd walk through the side street and onto a main street of the French Quarter singing the song that uh, we, that Daniel and um, Um, Joanne was just singing Hosanna to the King. We would sing that song and the fervor and the joy of God's people would be electric. We, you and I, God's people, together we celebrate the power of his love. We heard that song, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. We were crying out that the King of glory would come and would, would bring us to a new place. We knew that his joy, his happiness would always be with us. The word of God, which is usually proclaimed from the ambo, was proclaimed here for the microphone so that we as God's people could hear so clearly the word that was proclaimed to us today of the passion of Jesus. I often wonder about poor Judas. Judas realizing his sin he never he never went to the lord to ask forgiveness instead in despair he hung himself my sisters and brothers palm sunday if it teaches us anything it teaches us so clearly that our god has come to give us his forgiveness and so today i'm going to offer to you confession anytime you want it this week not on Wednesday, because we'll be doing the um, Coffee with Capucci on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. But other than that, I will be available. Just call me on my cell phone, 781-460-9502. 781-460-9502. And I'll make sure that I am outside ready for confession so that we can celebrate the power and the glory of God who loves us and the God who has saved us. I'm not going to just sit out there Instead, I want you to call to make a time. I want you to call so that you'll be taking that little step to say, Lord, here I am, I need you. Not as Judas who rejected forgiveness and and killed himself, but instead as a people who we all know are called and redeemed, saved and set free. We also have an opportunity for all of us to park in between the rectory and the parish center. There is a spot in the second floor of the rectory where the Eucharist is being shown all day, all night. We invite you to come out and pray. I have been moved to the core of who I am with the amount of people that have come to pray and reflect upon the glory of Jesus in the Most Holy Sacrament. People who are coming morning, noon, and night. 
All day long you see one, two, three cars, four cars out there. And it's so inspiring and such a blessing. Well, our Lent has been absolutely interrupted, but it doesn't mean our call to holiness has changed. We all need to pray. We all need to seek forgiveness. And we all need to live in the glory of Jesus Christ, whether it's easy or not easy, convenient or inconvenient, or as Paul says, in season or out of season. We are all to live in the glory of Jesus. And so today we heard about Judas, who in despair took his own life. My sisters and brothers, let us not be like Judas, who does not take forgiveness seriously, but let us go before the Lord and ask for his pardon and peace. I wait for your call, and I promise I will be present to each and every one who calls. God bless you. Let us together pray our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our prayers before our loving Father. We pray for the church, that in this time, our God will strengthen us, heal us, and make us a better witness of his love and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all world nations, that we'll stop the silliness of war and hatred and violence and work in the working with our Lord to establish a kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all families who are so very concerned with this COVID-19 plague that uh, the blood of Jesus will keep us safe. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who've gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
My sisters and brothers, please pray that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, our loving Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, the Lord be with you. And, with your and lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins. His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with angels and archangels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, my Savior, my Christ, praise you, my Jesus. Glory to you, O Lord. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God, my Savior, my Christ. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs for eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the absolute privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe mal distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us take a moment and pray for peace in our lives, in our homes, and in the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are unable to attend Mass, I invite you to say this prayer with me. It's called an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment Receive you, Receive you sacramentally. Come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and, you knew, and unite myself wholly to, to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, we, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks. Before you change the station, keep your eye on our Facebook page, which you can find on Facebook, 
It's St. 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 Charles Borromeo Parish Collaborative. It's all of that. St. Charles Parish, St. Charles Borromeo Parish Collaborative. You'll see that we're going to pray the rosary. We're going to be doing Stations of the Cross. We will be doing the Holy Week here um, on Thursday night, Friday afternoon, and um, Saturday night, and then on Easter again on cable. So we look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much. And don't forget to help support our parish in this time. Uh, our, we're, we're not a rich parish by any means. And so your contributions can't just stop and expect us to be well. So I know it's hard to ask that right now, but I guess I'm begging. Please continue to remember us. How great is our God. How great. Thank you.